So I'm going to do some two more examples here of how to find an inverse. So here's an example, f of x equals x cubed plus 3. So the first step, we're going to write that with our y equals to get rid of function notation. So y equals x cubed plus 3. Second step, we're going to switch the x and the y's. All you do is switch the x and the y's, leave everything else the same. Third step, we're going to solve for y. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So I have x minus 3 equals y cubed. And then to, to get y by itself, I'm going to, um, here I'll do it two different ways. So we will, we will take the cube root of everything, cube root of the left side, cube root of the right side. So I'm going to flip it around and so I have y equals the cube root of x minus 3 and then I'm just going to write that in my function notation. Cube root of x minus 3. So let's pick up from right here or let's see we were at this point here let's just do it a different way. There's advantages and disadvantages to both ways. Okay, so like we learned in the last section to get rid of the cube, you could raise everything to the reciprocal power, so that's one-third. If I do it to the right, I have to do it to the left. So then this looks like y equals x minus 3 all raised to the one-third power, and here it is in function notation and they each have their advantages and disadvantages. Okay, so that's finding an inverse, and now I told you I was going to give you a third check. So our third check is with our calculator. So let's go to y equals, and you'll notice here at y sub 1 I have the original function graphed. So this is x cubed plus 3, and then arrow down to y sub 2 and graph your inverse. And I kind of like to use that reciprocal method uh, for graphing just because it's easier, I think, than finding um, that cubed root or a different root key. But you can do either one. So y sub 2 uh, is the quantity x minus 3 all taken to the 1 third power. And here's the important point. When you graph it, you're going to press zoom and you're going to go down to number 5 and press square. So if you notice your calculator, it's wider than it is taller. So when you graph it, it kind of distorts your axes a little bit. When you do a zoom 5, though, it squares up your axes. So you get a true square look. All right, so here's your y cubed and your inverse. And if you kind of tilt your head to the right a little bit, um, you might notice that those are reflections of each other. And go back to y equals and arrow down to y sub 3 type in x. Remember when we did composites as a check, we found that when we compose a function in the inverse or the inverse in its function, we got x. And so if you graph the line y equals x and now tilt your head to the right, you can truly see that they are reflections of each other and they're reflected over the line y equals x. So that's another way to check. Um, all right, let's do a new example, second example, a little bit more difficult. So example, f of x equals 1 over x plus 5 plus 2. Step 1, we're going to change this to y equals, get rid of our function notation. Okay, step 2, I'm going to switch the x and the y Step 3, I'm going to solve for y. So let's first start by subtracting 2 from both sides. Okay, now I've got that uh, y in the denominator, and this is going to look really similar to a problem that we just did a couple days ago when we had something in the denominator that we wanted to solve for. And we talked about... Um, we talked about uh, cross multiplying and all sorts of stuff like that, but then I said what you can do is reciprocate both sides. So I can simply put a 1 under the, the piece on the left, 
So I have two fractions, even though they're not lining up very well. They are two fractions next to each other. And so I can simply reciprocate them. So this, the left side becomes 1 over x minus 2, and the right side becomes y plus 5 over 1. And let's continue this work right up here. I'm going to put my y on the left, and I no longer need that 1 underneath. That's equal to 1 over x minus 2. And then at this point, I subtract 5 from both sides. So I have y equals 1 over x minus 2 minus 5. And let's just write it with our function notation. Equals 1 over x minus 2 minus 5. And that is our inverse. And I'll leave the check of that up to you. That's the end of this video.